Okay, and what I'm going to talk about is blogging. And um, so this is the mandatory. If you want to get a copy of this slide, here they are, URL. I'm also going to send it to Tiana. And, and if, you know, it'll, it'll be, will, will you publish a list of these? It's going to get put on Sketch. Okay. So it'll be on Sketch. All the presentations should be there. Cool. Okay. So um, I actually programmed with punch cards, graduated Georgia Tech in 81. And the building that we had the punch card machines in was called the Cyber. <laughs> so that's really not a new term. Um, and I, uh, I, right out of school, joined IBM. And I uh, did mainframe programming and stuff like that. Uh, but in 96, it was really my birth of my uh, InfoSec career. I worked on an IDS that had 41 signatures. And that was considered bleeding edge at the time, right? So um, uh, from there, you know, I went to uh, Tivoli, which got acquired by IBM. And we ended up taking on, you know, I just started as like the first person in security. They hadn't really had security. So, so it grew and grew and grew. We were very successful with a product launch. And we ended up actually taking on a lot of IBM's uh, security mission, except for the mainframe stuff. Um, and uh, I've also been a product manager other places and a PMM other places. I'm currently at Alien Vault, an AT&T company, and I'm the editor of the Alien Vault blog. And I'm married, but I have a boyfriend named Twitter, according to my manager. <laughs> and she's right. She's right. You'll hear Twitter a lot in this talk, because I find it to be a, a great uh, resource. Okay, now, you've got to help me here. Everybody say um with me so we can get it over with. Um, or you can say ohm, but don't resist. Pardon the pun. <laughs> I did go to Georgia Tech. So. Okay, and who has read an InfoSec blog in the past six months? Some people have not. <laughs> oh, okay, they're just shy. Um, who has written an InfoSec blog in the past six months? I know you have. Oh, I got some converts. I got some converts to work on. Okay. <laughs> Um, why do you read the InfoSec blogs for people who said that they read them? Just to gather more information to learn more. To learn? Keep so current? Right. And the perspective is the key word of what you just said because um, I, I've read probably 20 blogs on Bitcoin and the security of Bitcoin, but each one has a unique perspective that they bring to the table. So I have a lot of people who come to me and say, I want a blog, but it seems like everybody's done everything before. Well, that, that's patently not true, because you can bring a fresh perspective, especially if you're a newbie. The newbie perspective can be the best of all. OK. Oh, another answer? Sure. Um, I often find uh, blogs have cutting edge content that's not yet been polished for a corporate production. Oh, this is a great point. So in Twitter, you can get something out in two minutes or 30 seconds. Uh, in a blog, you can crank out in a couple hours and get it out to everybody. But if you do a real white paper, those can take months you know, to polish and get exactly perfect. Yes, CJ? I like your blogs because you put everything in it so where I can understand it. And Aww. I get out when you're waiting for sarcasm. OK, I, I'm going to select one word and repeat it for the microphone, and that's witty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other? Motivations for blog for reading blogs. Okay. Um, it's a blogging is just a great way for people to know you, and to, and to become part of the community, especially if you're new. Um, it's a way to research thoroughly a topic. It's, it's, it needs to be something you have passion for, or at least a extreme curiosity about. And you'll research and you'll do your hard work on the blog. You know, and maybe do some 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 basic research yourself. Uh, maybe just do internet research. But at the end, you'll end up the expert at that topic, which is another side benefit for blogging. Uh, sometimes on Twitter, especially late at night, you see indecent exposure, where people are tweeting stuff, and it's, it's, um, it can get pretty ugly and so on. Blogs are going to be positive exposure, because you're going to think about it, you're going to consider it, you're going to spend more time than 30 seconds on it. It's a great addition to your resume. You know, I, I uh, actually had a guy that wrote a blog for me as an undergrad student. And I got to be one of his three references when he was interviewing for jobs and he got the job. So it's, 
it's a very, especially for uh, students, it's a great thing to do. And it's something corporate. You know, it's a corporate blog. So the hiring manager looks at it and says, this person's interface with corporate. You know, his quality of work is good enough to go in a corporate site. And you can send a link to your mom. And I highly suggest it, because the more clicks, the better on your blog. OK, so Javad Malik, I work with him at Alien Vault. And he suggested the name of Kate's seven tips to good blogs when he helped me do the prep work for this, the dry runs. But I had to make it Mama Kate, because occasionally that's my nickname on Twitter. Uh, the, the big thing is helpful information. Something will help another practitioner or another student or another researcher, something that you have a passion to share and that is helpful. And, and you can make a difference in the community. Um, curiosity about the topic. Um, a lot of people say, you know, you really have to be a rocket scientist, a bigwig uh, researcher uh, to be able to write a good blog. Not true. You can be a newbie and write an excellent blog. Ideally, the guideline we use is 500 to 1,000 words. But we've put out blogs with 3,000 words that are excellent, they're perfect, and that's the length they needed to be to get the information across, especially a very technical blog. Include pictures and videos. Now, people read like USA Today, not like Wall Street Journal. That's just a fact. That's just the attention span that we're dealing with. So the more you can break up your blog into small paragraphs, interspersed with pictures and screen captures, you know, visual type things, then what you also want to do is do alt text on, on each of the pictures. And that's for the uh, closed caption or the assisted hearing, no, the vision impaired. Oh, right. So, the, so it's what Google will read to a blind person when they're supposedly looking at the picture. So uh, you do want to use the alt text because that gives you more uh, brownie points with Google. Videos, obviously, everyone loves videos. Keep them short. You know, if they can be a minute, that's a perfect length for a video. Uh, do peer review. Run your blog by technical experts. Don't run your blog by uh, 15 different managers in your company, because then it'll end up as a Frankenstein. It, it really will. It'll read like very uncomfortably, not well. But uh, get technical review to make sure you're right on in, in all your facts. And then get one spit polish review. Somebody who's very good at grammar and spelling and will optimize your blog that way. So the key thing is every, you want people looking for you when you put out a blog. So the way to do that is optimize your blog for Googling. And what you need to do is when you're thinking about your blog concept, Name the blog what you would Google. What would you Google to get to this content? Don't get fancy or cute. We'll talk more about cute and sense of humor and where it's appropriate and when it's not. Organic traffic, to me, as a corporate blog editor, is the gift that keeps on giving. It's the thing that lets me take vacations and still have good volume to the site. And uh, it does take, it's a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, and uh, when you write a blog that is SEO, you know, that's search engine optimized, it won't be a cute story about a cat at the beginning. Because if you have a cute story about a cat at the beginning, humans might love it. But a Google spider is going to say, this is clickbait. The guy's talking about cats. Right? That's, that's really what will happen. So some of my best writers have to be retrained a little bit. Put the story in, but put it down low, lower. Don't lead with it. Don't bury the lead at all. Um, all right. And tasty to Google spiders. I've got a separate slide about that. Your blog needs to be unique. It needs to be, if, if, if you're doing vulnerability management, if you Google vulnerability management, the competition is fierce. So maybe pick a longer tail keyword, you know, a string of keywords that will give you a chance at being found when the person is looking at something for something more narrow. Useful enough to share. Links into your blog are really important. Getting a bunch of especially uh, very trusted people linking to your blog will up 
its value in, in the eyes of Google. And success breeds success. Be helpful, be relevant. So I have a lot of people, especially younger people, who say, what should I write a blog on? First of all, you should have a passion about a topic before you start writing a blog. If you're doing a blog like an English assignment, it's going to be a terrible blog. If your man said you need to write one blog a quarter, and you go, ah, and, and you just get yourself through it, it's going to be a misery to read because there won't be any passion there. You, it, it'll be something you did like, a, like an English composition project. So I did a Twitter poll to find out what the best blog topics for general advice is. Uh, and the outcome, can you all read that? All right, so it's uh, malware research findings. The winner was practical how-to. This should be no surprise. A lot of practitioners are like, I would like to read a lot of thought leadership and, and hear what so-and-so thinks about this, but they have to get their job done too. So they're gonna want helpful, practical uh, information. And tricky concepts explained is another great one. If you just happen to know, I, I'm not gonna use the example blockchain. If you happen to know how something works really, technically, you know, at a, at a root level, and you can explain it simply to help others, that's a great blog. On thought leadership, I have to, um, that percentage is a little misleading. So it's not that people don't like thought leadership blogs. I had a lot of comments to this poll that said, I love them, I read them all the time, but giving only one answer, I'm gonna have to prioritize things to get my job done. Okay, how to get people to your blog. Well, here's a, a pitch for a corporate blog. It would be, if you get on a, a site with a good reputation first and then republish in your personal blog, you're gonna get more attention. I have a personal blog, but if I really wanna be heard, I post the blog on the Alien Vault site because we have better reputation and, and better authority. Socialize on Twitter and LinkedIn for sure. Reddit, I, I can't tolerate Reddit. I am Reddit intolerant uh, because just some things. Uh, but if, I get friends to post there pretty often. You know, if you can tolerate it, do it. Our NetSec is a great place for information. Don't do clickbait. Even if, you, you know, if you're socializing it and you think of a clever tweet, it, can, it should be funny. It's great if it's funny but make it accurate. If the person, just think, if I click on this link in this tweet, is this gonna be something that really matches the, the tweet itself? And, and because people get angry about that. Don't you hate it when you, you click on something that says to find out what a movie star looked like from the 80s, you know, now, and you click on it and you go, oh, why did I do that? It takes you someplace ridiculous, and, and probably malicious too. Tag people who helped you in your research. If you had reviewers, tag them, because also they probably have more followers than you on Twitter, and they'll retweet it when you've acknowledged them in a lot of cases. So um, the next thing is, is the hardest bit, is investing the time to do proper search engine optimization. It's really hard to make yourself do this, and it is counterintuitive because the, the, the right style is say what you're gonna say, get it all out there front, uh, front and center, and try to understand how Google search works, uh, forget about it. It changes, it could change 100 times a year. So trying to, to game that algorithm is, is really a waste of time uh, because they, they really keep uh, changing it very quickly. But if you wanna learn more, I can actually click on this. Moz is a great resource. Where's my mouse? This is a great resource for you to go to. So Moz, it'll explain SEO to you and in quite a bit of detail. I'm not gonna really dwell on it, but I wanna highlight this as a, as a free thing that you can do to help yourself out. But there's a better way. If you work in a corporation that has an SEO guy or gal, Go to them. Be, be friends with them because they will help you so much that, you know, they'll take your, your they'll, they, ideally, they'll give you specifications of the keywords that you need to include in your blog right up front and then you write the blog and then they'll help you tweak it. 
so that it's going to get noticed by Google spiders. So the other thing is uh, the algorithm at Google, I heard an interesting talk from Robert Hansen yesterday on negative SEO and uh, uh, a little more about the people who are actually writing this algorithm and working in Google research. And apparently they're underpaid. I had no idea about that. But uh, a lot of people in Google have no idea how it works. There's a lot of automation. As the Google search is not always going to be fair, right? So that's another thing to acknowledge. But still, you, you, you owe it to yourself to do some thought, you know, some consideration for optimization. All right, so here's the how-to. Pick your keywords, what you would type in if you wanted to find this content. And, and these are just, just a very high level view of what you need to do, but use the keywords in the title and use them throughout the blog. Not too many times, because I think that's a penalty box if, you, if, you do, if you're too repetitive, but you know, several times as, as it would make sense. Um, use it in the headings. Use those keywords in, in a number of the headings. Uh, make your title short. You get penalized for too long of a title. Now, do I break some of these rules? Yes. If it's a research blog that the labs team has done and it need, the title needs to be eight words long, the title's eight words long. But ideally, like five. Avoid stories at the beginning of the blog. Get right to the point. Tell your stories later when you've already friended the reader and they say, I like this guy. I want to read a story now. I like the topic, I've learned something, I'll read this story. Um, we talked about alt text, that's, that's really critical. And, and don't try to, to, to game the search engine. Uh, I, I had to put quotes after I heard Robert's talk yesterday though because what I thought was smart maybe is just um, you know, not as smart as I thought. But the more you try to game them, the more they're gonna penalize you. So, not wise. Metrics, okay. So as a corporate blog editor, I measure everything. I look at it every day. I look at my metrics, and I'm gonna show you a little demo of how I look at my metrics, you know, just a, a visual of what it looks like. My, my key things are number of visits, where the visits come from, you know, was there a particularly good tweet that corporate sent out that just, just, just totally nailed it? I like to look at that, what works, what doesn't work. Um, I also look at number of subscribers. So even a personal blog, you can let people subscribe to it. Even with uh, Blogspot, you can get subscribers. So number of subscribers. On my personal blog, I have six follow <laughs> subscribers. But on, you know, in the corporate blog, it's, it's thousands. Um, I look at the number of views of each individual blog post. You know, how are they doing? Which topics are resonating? What, you know, kind of do the, after the fact, what, how could I have done better? with every blog that we put out. And so I've been doing it four and a half years you know, as blog editor at Alien Vault, and so I pretty much got it down what I have to look for and what I need to do. Um, I, you can do average time on blog. I used to do that, and then I was like, it wasn't really helping me, that metric, so, so I quit looking at that in the corporate blog. And bounce rate, because Google, again, will penalize you if people go to your topic, realize it's clickbait, and bounce right out. Should you include comments? Is Brian Krebs in the room? No. You should, nobody in this room should include comments. <laughs> he can get away with it because he's Brian Krebs. But um, uh, you're increasing your attack service. You're, you're, get your feedback on social. You know, just put out there, say, hey, I wrote this blog, what do y'all think of it? You know, any, you know, any, any things you want to fight me on? Or put it out, put it out that way uh, and ask for comments. Any agreement, disagreement on this? You're okay? Okay, good. Okay, if you need help with keywords, this is a really good tool uh, to look at, and it's free. Um, but I, I don't want to go into that. I was thinking about doing a demo of that one, but... Probably better to look at the metrics. Okay, bad things to do. How can you really screw up? If you're in a corporation, hide from the SEO guy. Because it, it, it is a little bit irritating to have to get that kind of help, but do it if you want people to get to your blog. You know, spend the time. Um, cleverness. I love cleverness. I love a sense of humor. 
but it does you no good when, it, when it, in terms of humorless Google spiders looking for material. Um, avoid using screenshots, videos, or images. Ideally, to be really bad, create a block of text with not a breath, not, no spacing, no paragraphs, no headers, just a block of text like a brick. No one will, it, well, somebody might read it, probably a family member. Um, okay, and uh, plagiarize or steal content. This is just, you know, your mom taught you this. You don't steal from people. And plagiarism is stealing without attribution. Yes? Have you had good luck with animated GIFs? Like the idea that you can get these screenshot utilities, usually in Linux, it'll, it'll take video that you're watching but turn it into an animated GIF. Is that better for having cross-platform availability on mobile devices, or is that like not worth the effort? That's excellent, especially in social. That's excellent. I can't do it with the technology that we have. We have a very secure content management system that is unfortunately clips your wings a little bit, what you can do. Uh, but, but if you know how to do that, I would definitely do that. I know, like video, sometimes you, know, you, you think it works, and then you look at it as another viewer. Well, the video requires you to click on it, it requires an action, right? So that's the handicap of the video, is it's just sitting there on your blog page. And I, that's why I always put them at the bottom, hoping the person's been so impressed that they're going to want to watch the video. Because when you put it at the top, it's like, wait a minute, I just clicked to get here. You want me to click again? So, but, but if you can figure out how to do the, the automated GIF, that's going to be just right in front of them. They don't have to click anything. I think that's brilliant. OK, um, give attribution. And mention them in social. And don't ever be rude. Like, even if you're making a technical point, make it the nicest way that you can and still be tech technically accurate. Oh, I'm going to show you some blogs done right. Mm. OK, if you Google how to prepare to take the OSCP, the number one thing that will pop up is this blog. It used to be number one. It changes. So if you do Google it, it might be three or something. It, it, it will change on a daily basis. I use another um, tool called Bright Edge. Uh, to look at, uh, at, at the details of organic traffic. But anyway, here you go. This is, I, since it was a student, this was an undergrad student in the Philippines who wrote this. It, it was our top performing blog uh, until recently. I think it still might be number one because it's picked up a lot of organic tra traction because people are Googling how to prepare to take the OSCP. Um, and so he started out with a story, but I thought that was important. You don't follow all the rules all the time. So for this particular blogger and what he wanted to do, we started out with a little story. And it didn't really impact the blog that much. So he's got pictures with alt text. He's got lists. He's got so many links in here. And they're wonderful links to really trusted resources. And the way Google looks at it is if you have cool friends, you know, and you're trusted by cool sites, and you trust them, and they trust you. You're, you're definitely one of the cool kids. So he's, he's doing all the right things here. And he's got his books. He's got more pictures. And there he is. There's Blade. So that's a neat one. Let's look at another one. Wait, where am I? Sorry. Uh, okay, so if you Google logs for SIM implementation, which for my employer is a really neat uh, topic because it applies directly to you know, what we do. And so when people are clicking on that and coming to our site, they're coming to our site and they might say, hey, who is this company, Alien Vol? You know what? They seem to know a lot about SIM and log management. You don't start looking at you. Uh, we actually um, do track deals that come in and new visitors that come in. And our blog is the number one um, uh, landing page uh, on the whole site. It even uh, surpassed our forum recently. So you're attracting new eyes, new visitors to your company that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So let's look at, uh, if you Google IDS, IPS, UTM, it'll be number one. Uh, building a home lad to hunt malware. And then, um, actually, if you Google best InfoSec jokes, 
we're, I think we're under Pinterest, but we're pretty high up. <laughs> and so that one was a great blog. So I ran this contest in Spiceworks, which is a, a community of small IT shops, primarily smaller IT shops, uh, professionals. And so I asked for their jokes. I took a collection of them, put it together in a blog. And uh, I think it's number 20 performer. We do about a blog a day. Uh, and we've been doing that for years, so we have a lot of blogs out there. All right. Any, any one of these you want to look at? Kind of pick apart? Because I've got a case study I want to do of a particular blog that, that, I, that I'm really proud of the young lady who did it. So, good to do that? Okay. I'm going to go out here and Google VLAN hopping. Well, it knows me, so, so it knows that that's the likely article. But anyway, Googling VLAN hopping. Hard to beat Wikipedia. You know why? Everybody in their own blogs or their own work that they do, they link to Wikipedia. because It's the easiest, quickest way to explain a concept. And it's just, you know, so it's hard to beat uh, Wikipedia. And there's Pam's blog. Pretty good competing with, like, Cisco. Right? <laughs> to be even in the neighborhood is a big thrill to me. Um, so here we go. And the author's name is Pam. She introduces the concepts. She gives a lot of good, you know, detailed explaining, not in a complicated way, but in a very understandable way of what these kind of complicated topics are. She's got lots of pictures with the alt text. She's got some, I guess that's some embedded code in here. No. Configurations for a switch. Uh, screen caps. Everybody loves a, a screen cap, especially if you go through a sequence. You know, say you're explaining how you set up a, a router or whatever, whatever it is, a piece of hardware. You take th through a series of, of screen caps, and then a person can just follow it just like a recipe. But always a great idea in a blog. Yeah. And, and it's a fairly technical and very long blog. And she's got mitigation in there. So if you're also looking for mitigation, this blog will pop up. Any questions? You think you're starting to understand what, what would be you know, the, the cookbook or the, the list of things that you need to do for a good blog you know, after you have the idea in mind? Okay. Now I'm going to show, oh, I didn't have to go back in here, sorry. I just added this last night, so. Um, all right, I'm going to show you BI, which is a Microsoft, I just call it Power BI. Does anybody know what the BI, business intelligence maybe? Okay, so I use this every day, and I mean every day and sometimes several times a day. It is my friend. We used to use Tableau, which I guess is a competitor. Oh, where is it? Oh, blog metrics right in front of me. All right, so this is my, my console. Uh, and I, I put it here to show you, you probably can't see this, but this is the top blog post over a period of time of a couple of months. And the number one is how to prepare the OSCP with 14,000 views. That's pretty good for a blog that was written, I think, last year. And, um, you know, in, in a couple of months to get that many views, that is good organic traction. Because it has the magic ingredient of a, a topic that people are searching on, and probably at the time it went out, low competition, and, uh, you know, something where it, it was a very meaty technical blog. Uh, and then VLAN hopping and, and mitigation. And then we have an old blog from 2014 we're currently refreshing that, um, that, that, that is on open source IDS. That, so that, that's just kind of an idea of what does well in a corporate blog. You know, malware analysis, malware re reverse engineering. These are all hot topics that, that we as a vendor kind of want to be known for, so, so we'd gravitate toward. But we'd also care about IT jokes and information security jokes. So that blog, let's see, it's gotten 2,100 
views in the past couple of months, which is pretty good for something we put out so long ago. All right, back to task. How am I doing on time? Oh, good. I can show you more of BI. All right, because if I was strapped, I was only going to show that. All right, so this is what I look at like overall. And the green one is the Security Essentials blog that we have. And the orange is the Labs Research blog. And this shows you over time uh, where my traffic is coming from. So if you look, see how much better we were doing right here in organic traffic? That was for the week. That's really good. And it, it just drops off terrible like this. We looked into it. Google changed its algorithm right then. And it penalized us in a certain way. Now, of course, we are working very hard to figure out what, how the algorithm changed so, so that we can adapt. Um, Google's intention when they change the algorithm isn't to mess people up. It, it isn't destructive in any way. They just want to be the best search engine. They want to be the go-to. They don't want a competitor coming in and being a better way for people to get information that they want. So, so the, the, their efforts are good you know, to try to uh, reward good, unique, relevant information. Uh, it's just that you know, when, it, when it's your job, you kind of worry about it a lot. And you try to figure out ways to get along with Google the best. And then if you look at, I, every day I look at the latest blogs, blog posts that have come out. And this shows where they came from. So for this blog, it's, it's a lot of social, about half the visits. Yes? Are these all blogs from Evianbolt? Yeah. Okay. This, is, this is hooked up to our salesforce.com, the whole marketing automation infrastructure. Yeah. So this is just something that you guys use to monitor the traffic, where it's coming from, sourcing, top blogs. Yes, yes. What's, what's being hit, you know, top okay. Yes, yes. Sorry, did, did you mention, uh, what about, I guess, Google Analytics? Yeah, I think Google Analytics is some layer of this sandwich. I'm just looking at the top, you know, the top bun, basically. You know, I'm getting the, the, all, the all the information I want. But, but as far as how it all works, I frankly don't know all the details, but GA is in there. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's hooked in with Salesforce, and then we have UTM codes, and it's kind of complicated. Yes? Uh, so once Google does change their uh, search algorithm, uh, how do you go about taking the steps to adapt? Oh, well, oh. OK, right. Because there's no transparency. You don't really know how they've changed it. So what our guy is doing is looking at, they made some changes by popping up uh, they're, they're favoring the small little snippets. You notice when I, when I Googled things, you get small little snippets. So I, whereas I used to be like right at the top on some of these blogs, they're favoring other content. So we're going to figure out how to get in there and, and do the same thing and, and, and really leverage whatever Google's uh, trying to do. Uh, and we have two full-time people on SEO, uh, and, and we're a small company. So you know, we invest pretty heavily in SEO. Yes. Wait, Google would pay us to link to our pages? Nirvana, can I go there? <laughs> no, it's the opposite. You know, people put the paid ads at the top. I never click on them. But people, you know, with the paid ads at the top, they're paying for those to be, yeah. Yeah, but if you find out how to get to that place, I want to go, for sure, for sure. And then I also look at my blog post stacked, because I like to see who's done really well in the past week. And you know, looking at it here, I just, and it's super easy for me to not have to look at Excel spreadsheets. I'm just a very visual way to do it. Now, if you're, this is your personal blog, even on Blogspot, you do get some of this stuff. You can see like, what country they're coming from, and it's free. You know with everything free, you know what you're getting. You're the, you know, you're the bacon or whatever. I don't know. I, I forget the analogy right now. But you know you don't get something for nothing. But if it's just a blog, it's warming up, and you just want to try a few things and, and so forth, it's, it's free. And you, you go ahead and get a little count and get going right away. The other thing is almost very many corporate blogs will take guest blogs if they're high quality, helpful, technical information. Uh, and 
that's another way to very get very quick engine behind you of, you know, for every blog we go out, you know, we start out, we do the social, the early tweet, the late tweet, we do LinkedIn, we do Facebook, uh, Google Plus is gone, we don't do that anymore. But, but you get the gist. We put a lot of effort into promoting, sometimes even email campaigns to get these blogs read. Oh, and I also look at blog subscriptions. And you want to see something fascinating? See that blip right there, right in the middle? That was when GDPR kicked in. And an email was sent to, I guess, everybody. So what happened with the blog is the guy had a chance to opt in or out and all that stuff, the details. I guess they made the blog one of the choices. And people said, oh, that looks good. And they actually subscribed. I think it was the only category that went up with GDPR in terms of sus subscribers. So I think I have a couple more slides. Right. Questions, that's just questions. Key takeaways. Um, I wanted to encourage people to ask questions, but you people are not shy, so I'm very happy with that. Um, okay, so write about what you, what you have passion for. Don't take a writing assignment. Don't do English Lit 101. Don't think it's a ticky box. Oh, so-and-so wrote a blog. I better write a blog. No, write when you really have something to share with the community. Um, take the time to optimize. Uh, post to sites with good authority, of course. Don't try to game. Deliver quality content to the best of your ability and take the time and do the research and deliver quality and then if you build it, they will come. So this is um, the mandatory meme for every presentation. It's like what people think bloggers do. And, and um, it's, it's really, you know, being a blog editor, I have a lot of people go, but what do you do for a job? <laughs> so, so it's a different perspective. OK, so that was the content I had. Um, any questions, or do you want to look at anything in particular? You want to look at a, a, a blog you've written, and we could do a group uh, yeah, how to optimize it uh, thing? If you're just going to do an independent blog, what, what like is a good platform? Well, if you, if you don't want them to spend no money and very little effort, no money. Blogspot. <laughs> it's a Microsoft thing, right? You, you have one. Oh, it's a Google thing. Oh, that's why it pops up so well in searches. <laughs> I wondered. That's funny. Yeah, so that's a free one. It's easy. And then once you learn that, you, you might get more sophisticated. Yes, Kat. Um, for corporate blogs, do you have any experience using um, tools like Textio that look for bias patterns in writing? And if so, how do you balance uh, using that tool with uh, search engine optimization? We do not use that tool. What was it called? Textio? Yeah. Textio? Uh, no, we, we, don't, we don't do that. So. Uh, what kind of bias are you referring to? I should probably repeat this, but it was such a smart question. I'm really rather limited, okay. so. <laughs> we using it for like uh, job postings and stuff, but it has any kinds of application in writing. So it looks like, um, and I would think it would be useful in like, I don't know, instructional things or intro things. Um, looks for um, certain keywords and patterns that tend to like be, at, have like some kind of like, um, like either like gender undertones or racial undertones or some kind of bias that skews people. Oh, I got you for that. But we don't do that currently, but I will have a look at it. I do use a tool within Bright Edge that um, allows me to take a, a, a blog, plug it in, and I get graded on it for SEO, which is kind of a neat thing. But, but that's a different twist on it. That's an entirely uh, different twist. So I'll, I'll look into that one. So I'm not going to ask that Hi, Chris. about intellectual property policy, but uh, but on her point, Gartner Group found to increase a high, part Gartner Group, to increase a high rate of women, you have to make it clear that that person applying does not have to qualify for everything, but has to qualify for the top aspects of the job. Okay. What will happen is that women will not apply for a job unless they meet 100% of the criteria. This is a proven fact from uh, a Gartner group uh, analysis. So you have to be very careful, do not imply that you have to meet all team qualifications. What if it happens to be in the top three? Like you're the world's expert in X, Y, and Z, but you don't happen to know like Texio. 
Uh, yeah, I got you. But, so there are other parts of our site. I think that that would be more critical, and that would be the, the we're hiring and careers page, I would think. Yeah. Well, in, our, in our technical blogs, we don't talk about sex very much at all. I mean, <laughs> our, our blogs are non-racy. <laughs> oh, although I did have a funny thing happen where we, remember that scandal where there, were, there was hacking and they were hacking celebrity nudes? So we put a blog out, very technical blog, it, but it had uh, celebrity nudes in the title. That was a bad mistake because then, no, that was really bad because then we got a bunch of X-rated naughty bad sites linking to us and then Google thought, oh, where's Alien Vault going with this? And that we actually got a little penalty box there for a while because of these unseemly sites linking to us. I guess none of them read the blog because they would have been very disappointed. <laughs> so. Yes? Um, for a beginner uh, blogger, would it be easier to write in first person versus, like, for example, the guy that said, um, how to prepare for a sequel? Yeah. I think he started off with uh, how he did it. Mm -hmm. Would it be better to start writing that way because you're giving your own experience and that would mm -hmm. be easier to write on? Somebody, something, how to do something. Right. Very much personalize your blog. Put your perspective in there. Don't be afraid to share your perspective and, and definitely personalize it. Uh, and the more informal you can make a blog without having it sloppy or you know, unreadable, but you definitely want uh, to be like you're talking to the person, like you're sitting down with them explaining you know, how to write a blog or whatever it is. Make it very um, conversational. Make it first person, make it active, not, not passive third person voice or whatever. It, don't make it sound like a white paper. Those are some bad blogs. People are like, if I didn't want fun, I wouldn't be, I'd be going to your white papers, not blogs. So keep them a little bit fun. Great. Anything else? Hey, Kat. If you're somebody who kind of likes to tweak and refine a lot, uh, when you're writing something, how do you decide what done looks like? For a blog? OK, that's a great question. When, is it, when are you done with a blog? If it is research that needs to get out there very quickly, um, don't polish it too much. It's more important to get the information out there, you know, especially if it's something where people, you know, companies can get hurt. So, so it depends on the blog. But I, here's my guideline I tell people who say, I don't have time to write a blog. I say, you should spend one hour actually writing the blog, or less. One hour or less writing the blog. Now, doing the research and knowing enough to write a good technical blog it might take a lot of time. But hopefully, that's part of your job anyway. So when you're capturing the blog, Lay it out there. You know, do a little outline and lay it out there. And it's, it's, you're not writing a book, you're writing a blog. And it's a different level of expectation that people have. People don't expect you know, typos and things like that. But, but you know, say the worst happens. Oh, it's, yes, it's happened to me, I must admit. I've, shipped, I've published a blog with, with a typo. I go in the next morning and fix it and put it live. So it will happen. But the nature of blogs is very fast moving. and so. Don't make it a masterpiece. Don't spend a month on a blog. Doing the basic research, you might have to. But writing the blog, uh, and get help from somebody who's a good writer. Right? If you're very technical, just reach out, and people will be complimented that you're asking them uh, for the help. <coughs> yes, Chris? You saved me by rephrasing the question. You're working on the blog. You've written a lot of great material. And you decide you want to write a book off of the blog. Yeah. Corporate or not corporate, what advice would you give to say, I would like to turn this into a book? You know what's in the blog. You know the most about it. Yeah. But you think there's a book in there. What do you have to think about in order to do that? I, I don't have direct experience because I've never had a blogger go on and write a book on the particular topics they wrote the blog on. But a guy like Tony Robinson, DI667, has written a bunch of books himself. He would be a good person to ask about the experience of writing a, a book. He's written guest blogs for us, too, but on different topics than he's written the books on. Right, very good. So, great. And thank you very much for, for listening. <laughs> <laughs>